in this question, we look at how to give an individual access to a team site. If you've not really worked with team sites before, the reason that they're important to us is that the work boxes that are going to store a lot of your projects and meeting type information and policies actually live underneath a team site. So the work box is where the content will be, but the team site actually owns the work box. So in terms of the hierarchy, the team site is one level above the work boxes. If you want to know a bit more about that, uh, one of the original videos, video number one, actually talks you through that in a bit more detail. But first thing is, just to understand that controlling the security of your team site is something that's very, very important. Uh, for example, if I was the manager of the housing team, what I might choose to do is invite everyone that actually currently works for me in and around that team into our housing team site. What that will mean is automatically everyone that I've invited into there will gain access to the housing owned work boxes. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to control the access of a team site. In this demonstration, we're going to invite one extra person into an existing team site. Here in the demonstration, we start off having logged into Izzy already, and we're actually at the Me page, which is the default page when we first visit the Izzy environment. Our team sites are actually tucked away in the My Teams tab. So we're going to go into My Teams, and we can see here we've got organizational team sites, and we've got communities of practice. For the purposes of what we're doing, I can go into either of those. They're both going to work in exactly the same way, either a team site or a community of practice. So having gone into a specific team site, I now find on the right hand side, the very last button available to me is invite user to the team. There's a very simple form to fill in. Most of the things on the form you don't need to change. You're going to enter in the name of a person that you wish to give access to your team site. When you enter the name, if it can't work out who, who you're talking about, it'll give you a list of people to choose from. So in this case, there was three or four people with similar names, so it offered me a list of those people so I could identify the specific person that I want. We can also define here whether this person will be just a member of the team, in which case they can contribute content, such as new documents, or if they're actually going to be a team owner, what that means is they can invite other people in and they can also kick other people out of, the, of this team. So uh, being an owner, ticking the team owner box, means they can actually control the security. Further down the window here, you can see we're able to customize the email. So we're able to change the wording of the email that's going to get sent out to people when we click the invite button. So behind the scenes now, that would have sent an email to anyone that we'd addressed it to, and they would now um, have received an invite and a link to bring them to this site. They've also been listed now in both the team owners and the team members list, and this is where I could remove them from if I change my mind. So it might be that um, there's a particular person or two or three people that need access to my team site and the work boxes within it for two or three weeks. So the process we've just gone through here would have allowed me to invite those two or three people into my team site, even though officially they don't work in my team. I can invite anyone from any other team and then when I no longer need them to have access, I can clean up my security and kind of lock things back down a bit, down again, by visiting the team owners list here and the team members list and clicking remove to take people back out of there. One additional note that's just worth sharing, you, sharing with you, a little tip if you will, you can't just add an individual into the owners group. If you want someone to be an owner, you need to also add them as a member as well. Remember, by being an owner, it means they're in charge of the security of the team site. By being a member, it means they can contribute content. So notice in this case, we've got Alma listed as a member, but we've also got Alma listed as an owner. And that is correct, and that's the way it would need to be. Assuming I want Alma to not only manage the content and work with the content, which is what being a team member gives her, I also want Alma be able to manage the security and to invite other people in and, and lock other people out. 